The ideas expressed in the following presentations are those of the speakers and do not necessarily reflect the views of ACI or its committees. ACI web sessions are recorded at ACI conventions or other concrete industry events and will be made available for viewing free of charge for one week. Thereafter, they will be archived on the ACI website or added to ACI's online CEU program depending on their content. Well, good afternoon. It's afternoon, so we went from morning to afternoon. Uh, appreciate everybody's time. So our presentation today, we're going to talk about a new technology uh, in terms of uh, nanotechnology. And first and foremost, I want to uh, thank my co-authors, uh, Dr. Van Bui, ACI fellow who's in the room, uh, was one of my co-authors, as well as Paul Seiler. So appreciate their time and support in putting together this presentation and paper. Uh, the presentation we're going to walk through today is an overview of this technology. We have a lot more data and graphs that you can get when, if you want to download the paper um, from the ACI website. So in recent years, there's been significant research and product development in the field of nanotechnologies. From medicines to electronics to coatings, the answers to really big problems are being addressed by very tiny solutions. And you saw that from some of the presentations that we had earlier today. ASTM and other governing agencies have created definitions and guidelines to clearly delimit nanotechnologies from microparticles. In 2006, ASTM International Committee E56 on nanotechnology approved its first standard on nanotechnology, and this nanotechnology definition is here up on the screen. In the cement and concrete field, Nanotechnology models of calcium silicate hydrate, or CSH, have allowed researchers to develop particles to improve overall CSH formation and better hydration of concrete. The practical challenge with this, and we saw this from the first presentation, is how to include these nanoparticles into a concrete mixture. And the most practical and logical option is the use of a liquid admixture. And that's what we've utilized in this new technology. The commercial use of a liquid-based suspension of CSH nanoparticles began in Europe in 2009. This technology focused solely on early age strength development. Our researchers here in North America have been able to expand on this nanotechnology to increase both early and late age development of concrete without affecting set time. So I'd like to show you a brief video demonstrating how this technology works. First, let's look at classic cement hydration. We all know that concrete consists of sand, cement, coarse aggregates, and water as its main ingredients. When cement particles come into contact with water, hydration begins and results in the formation of CSH crystals and other hydration products. The use of a liquid admixture to introduce millions of CSH crystal nanoparticles into the concrete mixture allows for better hydration. These CSH nanoparticles act as nucleation points in the concrete to facilitate the growth of CSH crystals. This technology provides improvement in the overall hydration process, which increases both early and late age strength development of concrete. So as you saw in the video, the CSH nanoparticles that we're using in this liquid admixture facilitate the growth of CSH crystals in between the cement grains, which improve the overall hydration of general Portland cement. In this pictorial representation you see up on the screen, you see a brown aggregate, or in essence, this is a sand grain, adjacent to two gray cement grains. These CSH nanoparticles are very, very small, and they're sho shown in gold, and what they're able to do is bridge the difference between those cement grains. When introduced into a concrete mixture, millions and millions of these nanoparticles serve as nucleation points for additional CSH crystal growth. Not only do you have CSH growth on the cement grains themselves, but CSH crystal growth also occurs in between the cement grains on these CSH crystals, which improve the overall hydration process and general strength development. 
To get a better understanding of just how small these particles are, it is best to compare them with other objects. There are one million nanometers in just one millimeter. And ASTM defines a nanotechnology, according to the standard, as particles ranging from 1 to 100 nanometers in, in width. So a human hair is about 100,000 nanometers in width. A cement grain generally is around 30,000 nanometers in width. These CSH particles are a mere 75 nanometers. These CS nanometers are so small that they fit in between the cement grains and facilitate overall hydration and improving strength development. So the benefits of including and improving cement uh, hydration uh, are, are numerous. Enhancing cement hydration is critical to increasing general strength development. The use of these CSH particles provide unmatched strength performance and are creating a new category of admixture performance. The use of these CSH nanoparticles provide the opportunity for mix optimization without strength loss. It also provides the ability to increase the amount of total supplementary cementitious materials, improving the environmental sustainability and footprint of a structure. So a couple data charts to share with you, just showing you the performance of this product. So this technology, when used on a given mix, increases the overall strength enhancement of concrete. Generally increases it both from one, with, from the one day period all the way out through full 28 days. And the, the strength enhancement is depending on the reference mix. So the higher performance the reference mix, the more strength enhancement you will have. And so this is a typical mix. This is a, uh, a, a 700 pound cement mix. Uh, uh, no, I'm sorry, this is a uh, 611 cement uh, mix. As you see, we're getting between 46 to 20 percent strength increase on top using these CSH nanoparticles. But you also have the opportunity with using these nanoparticles to optimize a mix. And so this mix here is one of our green sense mixes. So this is a already a very highly optimized mix that has high levels of fly ash and Portland cement as well as limestone fillers. And so with this mix, we were able to take out 75 pounds uh, of total cementitious material. We included in these CSH nanoparticles and got better early strength and equivalent ultimate strength. So what's clear is these CSH, CSH nanoparticles are increasing overall uh, cement hydration, and you're seeing that in the compressive strength. But we also are able to see this in the, in the calorimetry data that we see in mix over mix. So what you see here is the black line is a reference mix, uh, which is a, uh, a, was a type 1, 2 cement with a 25% slag replacement. With the green line, we use the CSH nanoparticles on top to get general Portland cement strength increase, uh, and it's giving better increase throughout the whole structure. And so what we see in the calorimetry data, mix over mix, is you see a second bump in the calorimetry data with the use of these CSH nanoparticles. The red, the red line is reducing total uh, 50 pounds per cubic yard or 30 kgs per meter of total cementitious reduction and again getting equivalent or better strength development but you're also seeing that second bump in the calorimetry data itself. So in conclusion, uh, having these, using these CSH nanoparticles improve the uh, cement hydration and provide several key benefits. These CSH nanoparticles improve both early and late age strength development of concrete while supporting sustainable construction. These CSH nanoparticles give the option of either reducing the total cementitious material content or increasing the use of SEMs, uh, fly ash, slag, silica fume, while maintaining both early age strength development and ultimate age strength development. When you're using this technology on top for early age strength development, it provides a lot of value to both contractors and engineers as well as producers. Increases the production efficiency and the speed of construction for both precast producers and ready mix concrete applications, providing value to engineers, contractors, and precast concrete producers. The use of these CSH particles in this nanotechnology provides a lot of flexibility in design for producers, for production, for concrete producers and uh, contractors and engineers. So the benefit of this is throughout the entire value chain increasing the overall cement hydration. Thank you, I'd be happy to answer any questions.
Thanks, Chris. Any questions for uh, asking if it's already in the market? Yeah, so this technology was launched in Europe in 2009, and so it's been, a, it's been in the market for, you know, for almost, uh, almost 10 years. We've launched this product, this net technology in North America this year, and so we've had this technology has both a long-term application uh, effects, both in Europe and then new, newly here in North America. Yep. So the question was, uh, did we use different variations of the calcium silicate ratio in the concrete mixture? And so uh, our initial testing when we developed this technology in Europe, they looked at different levels of those uh, CSH seeds to figure out what's the optimal performance for both strengthening. So, yeah, thank you, Dr. Shaw. So the, his question was, why did we see in that particular calorimetry data the 12 hours? So that one had a slag cement replacement. So depending on the use of SCMs is, can shift that calorimetry bump. But your, your point was, when do you see it? And so in a straight OPC mix, generally you'll see that in the 8 to 10 hour range, uh, somewhere around that range, depending on the temperature of the concrete, the amount of total Portland cement in the mix. But the use of SCMs, depending on whether using a high level fly ash or slag, can slightly shift that calorimetry bump back later. And so that one was a 25% a replacement. We have some other calorimetry data that's in the paper. Um, that one is one that was quite visible and we wanted to make sure to, you could see it from the screen. So. I also had a question, Chris. Uh, I noticed that you had a lot of early age, a greater early age strength gain mm -hmm. in the early ages, and and at 28 days it evened off in the in the replacement mm -hmm. that you did in that particular study. Have you taken it longer periods to know how much is is gained or how much is retained in gain over so, a reference mix? So, uh, so. What you're seeing with these CSH nanoparticles is you're getting early age strength development. We've also been able to engineer those technologies in that admixture so we get that ultimate age strength development out to 28 days. And so generally when you ask past 28 days, do you have that? So usually the PSI differential and generally the percentage differential stays the same whether you're going out 56 or 90 days. That strength differential that you see between a reference mix and one with the CSH nanoparticles is generally consistent all the way out, even out to to, uh, to one year. So they don't they don't tend to meet back up uh, at the longer age. That differential, that additional strength benefit you get, goes all the way out. And so, with the use of these CSH nanoparticles, you're getting early age strength development. But a lot of times, when you use a, a traditional non-chloride accelerator, you get a burnout, and so you don't get that 28 bon 28 day uh, benefit of this of the uh, of the strength enhancement. When using these CSH particles, it gives you not only the early age strength development, but it also benefits out, out, all the way out to 28. Uh, question over here. Chris, what is a nine-year difference between the introducing of them in Europe and the United States? <laughs> so my, 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 my colleague right here probably is turning red right now because he's the one who's been pushing us to do this for quite some time. So. Um, so we, we, we introduced this in Europe in 2009, and everybody knows what kind of happened in 2009. Uh, you know, the, the economy went very difficult, and so the value of this technology wasn't always as clear. Uh, we did a lot of testing for this in the applications that were usually used in Europe. So this technology was identified in Europe for replacing non-chloride accelerators. Uh, they have some issues in certain countries about not allowing nitrates or other sort of chemistries that are traditional in non-chloride accelerators. And so the chemistries that we use here in Canada and North America and in, in the U.S. Um, are as efficient, are, 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 are as effective if not more efficient than some of these CSH particles. So what we did was we took back and combined them with other technologies to create, to create an, a, a more robust product. So. The, the technology we have in Europe, uh, they use these seeds straight, and so we've been able to combine them with other chemistries to really create a more robust uh, uh, product. But that's a wonderful question. Yeah. So uh, the one that was the cement reduction, where we took out, uh, I think it was 75 pounds of cement, total cementitious, you do get a little bit earlier bump, uh, and then that kind of will, will, will even out towards you get to the 28 days. When you use it f on top or expanding the performance space of a given mix, the percentages are different because the differential between the, the lower, you know, the percentages are somewhat misleading because you're talking about only maybe 
four or 500 PSI. When you're going out to 28 days, you're talking about 1,000 or 1,200 or 1,400 PSI. So the percentages are somewhat misleading you. It's more important, particularly for producers or even engineers, is to look at the, the total PSI differential and the benefits you're getting. So, so that, it's that's not the percentage of spent grain that remains constant. No, it's, it's, it's generally the, the yeah, and it's generally the, it's the percentages in, we can we can pretty much correlate that if you're getting a, so much percentage gain at seven days that that will always carry out to 28 days. But we're able to look at the technology, look at the uh, difference reference mix, and identify where that strength enhancement will head. Okay. Any, any last questions for Chris? Oh, we have a no, couple over here. First, this gentleman, and then we'll go to the last one. Uh, have you changed the behavior of shrinkage? So that's a, that's a very good question in terms of shrinkage. So what, what you'll see when you're using this technology in terms of shrinkage is that it acts similar to what you would have to an accelerated mix. So if you are using a non-chloride accelerator to get additional strength enhancement early on, you'll see some slightly additional uh, shrinkage data compared to a reference mix. This technology is similar in shrinkage than what you would see with using a non-chloride accelerator. But you can use other techniques for optimization to reduce that, uh, use the, reduce those uh, those shrinkage values. Okay, and one last question from Hamid. I assume this has to be product according to OSM, right? Yes. So what, what classification is this product? So this is a cl uh, classified as an ASCM type S, uh, 494 type S, because it doesn't affect set time. So all it's doing is giving you strength enhancement. It doesn't affect workability. It doesn't affect the slump life. If you were adding this into a, into a mix, you would never know there's any difference. It doesn't affect air, it doesn't affect slump, it doesn't affect workability. All you're doing is getting increased strength enhancement. So as defined by ASTM, you can use a type S for the strength enhancement. And we have third-party data and also 494 data that support those claims.